Hello everyone, now we are talking about the preparation of food and whole of this will categorize into two parts. One is pre-preparation or before cooking and what are the methods used for the cooking of food. Food processing is a very multifaceted activity and everybody eats the food but after cooking the food and the before cooking you do small small activities and use small small tools to do that. In this picture you are seeing the cutting of a vegetable in another picture you are seeing the kneading of the dough before that you cannot eat the chapati and before cutting the vegetables you cannot eat the vegetables. I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal giving you some of the important techniques, their benefits and the tools used for these activities. Let us see what are the objective of this lesson. First we will learn about the meaning and importance of cooking. Then we will learn about the importance of pre-preparation of cooking, some saline features of different methods of cooking and some novel cooking methods like solar cooking and microwave cooking. Let us see what is the need for cooking, why we need the cooking. First thing what cooking is doing alters the texture, appearance and taste. Then it makes the food soft so that it can be easily chewed. Then it makes the food easy to digest and useful for the body. It becomes appetizing and increases the appetite. You want to eat more and more when the food is well cooked and tasty. It makes the food safe and sterile. Then it creates variety in our meal. So this is the importance of cooking. And cooking is the one when we use the heat to produce the cooked form of food. Now, most important part of this lesson is importance of pre-preparation of food. What is this pre-preparation? Activities which are done before the final cooking of food such as washing, cutting, kneading the dough. So, in all, it is the activity by which the raw food is converted into the form that can be cooked. I will show you one example here. So, this is the form of a vegetable. You cannot cook the whole cabbage here. So, this is the form of cabbage which is pre-prepared before the cooking. Now, we will understand one by one. First, most important activity of any kind of cooking or any activity related to the food is washing. I will show you, this is the potato which you get from the market. Can you use this as such? No. So, what I have to do with this? This is a water. I have to clean this wholly before peeling, before cutting, before steaming, boiling, whatever I have to do, I have to clean this potato very nicely and this is to remove all the dirt, all the debris or all the microbes which are coated or which are there or may be present in the food. So now this is a washed food. This is the apple. You should not eat as such. You should wash before eating it. Now cutting is very crucial stage or activity in pre-preparation or before cooking. So there are various size of the knife shown here and you can also see the scissors. I will show you the where we should use which one. If you want to use or for the scraping, then 
I will show you. This is the potato. So, there is a very thin kind of peel here. So, I will use this small size of knife. I will do the peeling like this before cutting it. Right? If I want to cut this tomato, this is washed, I will prefer to use this small serrated knife. Then only I will be able to cut the small slices here. This is cutting. If I have to make big slice of this, I will just use this one and I can use. This will enhance the speed of the cutting and when you have to have the finer slice, you can use this one. I will show you another thing. This is a green leafy vegetable. This is a coriander here. Just to show which kind of tool you can use it. If I have to just cut the stem, the form you are getting from the market, you use the bigger one. So, it becomes the faster speed. If you have to really use the tips of the thing and you can use the scissors and you can use like this. And this red thing you are seeing here is called cutting board. If you do the cutting on this, this is safer. You can wash again and again. You are not spoiling the basic surface of your kitchen or wherever you are working. Now we are talking about the peeling. If you need to peel the orange, you can peel with the help of your directly hand. You do not require any kind of tool for this. But if you need to peel this, you need to use the small one. And there are peelers available for peeling the food. And peeling means removing the inedible portion of the food. This is not edible. This is not edible. So, the whenever the peeling the potato, banana and orange is very easy because it is done by the hand. But peeling of this garlic is very difficult sometime. So, you use the a small one, separate out all the cloves of the garlic, then you just pick up the till and peel this small, small. So, it is up to you, you can peel all together and keep aside for the whole day or whole meal. Now we will talk about the grating. Sometimes grating is required when you are making the raita, you are making the halwa or you are grating the cheese over the pizza. So there are various kinds of graters available in the market with different size and different mesh size. Mesh size means the size of the hole. So, this is a very small one, very handy and this is basically a cheese grater you can see in the picture also. So, you can grate the cheese here, but there are other big grater also. You can see this and why I am showing this? Because in this you can see the various size of the mesh. So, depending upon the requirement of the size of the final product, not the cooked one, but the raw, you need the strand or you need the semi powder or coarse thing, then you have to really select this is the bigger one, this is much bigger one, this is a small and this is a much bigger length of the mesh side and through this you can make the potato chips or banana chips. Shedding. Shedding is also a type of cutting or slicing, particularly used for fruits and vegetables. When we need the pieces or slices into fine form, 
and we use the knife or the cutter. I will show you how you can shred the apple when it is needed particularly to make any kind of food product. So, this is the apple I have cut and here what I will do it, I will just hold the hand like this and take the knife on the right hand and start cutting into the small and thin because this is the activity which no other tool is giving you. You can shed the potato, you can shed the cabbage, whatever you want you can shed it. See the how thin the slices are if you want to have a beautiful fan out of this you can use this technique very well. See how this shedding has made the beautiful flower out of this apple and a small size of apple and the more than half is remained. So this is the way the decorations are done. So shedding is very important activity. Grinding, grinding is very very important before making any kind of gravy, any kind of mixture any kind of juice, all these are activities using the grinding technique. Even what we have the atta, we have to get the wheat grinded, maybe at kind of mill. So grinding is making the food into the powder form or even the paste form and there are variety of grinders available in the market. In this picture, you can see the two types of grinder. One is the pestle and mortar which is just grinding the small quantity of pepper corn. You cannot grind so much of quantity every time you need only few pepper corn to be freshly ground and you can use this pestle and mortar. And this is a very traditional method used by even Ayurveda charyas. But the modern technique of grinding we use the grinder or electric grinder or some people call it mixy. So there is a button there is electricity, you need use such kind of grinders for these things. Now, those who are eating the egg, sometime or the other, they make the variety of things to use the egg and for that you can see in the picture how that egg is broken, how that egg, the first white comes out, then the yolk is inside the shell itself. Then if you want to use the yolk, then you pour it or otherwise you can separate it out. And with this you can make the fluffy omelette also. Now the sieving. What a sieving is? Basically sieving is the separating or removing the larger pieces from the small one. But it is not only that, but it helps to remove the insects or any inedible parts present in the food. So whenever you are bringing any kind of flour from the market, whether it is a rava or suji, whether it is a wheat flour, you tend to sieve it. It makes the flour fluffy also. Now mixing is very important. Grinding and mixing is two different activities. What is mixing? Mixing the different kinds of food together and to a homogeneous or one consistency. This is in picture an example shown here. When you are making the cake, you have to mix the flour, the chocolate if you want, the milk, sugar, oil and any kinds of nuts. So then everything is mixed very well and these are all done before or sometime during the cooking also when something is there, you keep on stirring. That is also a type of mixing and after the cooking also you do the mixing sometimes. Steeping. What is steeping? In this picture you can very easily identify. You cannot eat the rajma or the whole chana or the whole kabali chana. You have to soak it. There are various advantages for that that improves the cooking quality and reduce the cooking time. So the any kind of dry food 
when soaked in the plain water or any kind of liquid if required by the recipe and that process is called steeping. Now we will talk about the cooking. What is cooking? Once the food has undergone a various stages of the pre preparation, then it is subjected to the heat and when any kind of raw food is subjected to the heat is called cooking. This is a direct cooking. There are various methods and this red is only the showing of the fire. So there are various methods of cooking which can be categorized into various means. Moist cooking, dry heat cooking, using the fat and there is direct, indirect or pressure cooking and there is a microwave cooking and the solar cooking. So one by one we will talk about all these type of cooking. When we say the moist cooking methods, moist means water. So every time we will use the water on the left top you are seeing the steam coming out of the water. Below that water is boiling only that we use for the cooking, boiling the egg, boiling the potato, boiling the rice and right we are seeing the pressure cooker that we use for the pressure cooking. In the lower side you see the pan that we use for poaching or stewing. One by one we will learn. First we will simplest method is boiling. Anybody who do not know any type of cooking can also do that. What is that? The food is immersed into the sufficient amount of hot water and heated to the boiling temperature that is 100 degree centigrade or 212 Fahrenheit. This temperature is maintained till the food is cooked or softened and becomes edible. What are the things we need to remember when we are boiling? Boil the food along with their skin to minimize the losses of nutrients. Boil in covered utensils to minimize the losses of nutrients due to evaporation because many nutrients in the presence of heat evaporate very fast. Avoid excessive boiling because it can disintegrate the food or spoil the texture. Second is steaming. Here you can see the water is in the kettle and that is being used for the cooking into the pan and the steam is coming out. Next is your simmering. Most of the time we do not realize even that we are simmering the food. Food is cooked in water as the medium and providing the heat below the boiling temperature and that gravies are generally prepared by this kind of method. Points to remember during simmering is do not bring the food to boiling temperature and do not cover the food while cooking so that the temperature does not arise because as soon as you cover the food the temperature may indeed it brings out the flavor very well. Next method is poaching. Poaching is very simple soft method but need little care and it is usually done with the fish, egg and fruits. The food is cooked in the minimum amount of liquid at the temperature just below the boiling point and when we are generally poached egg are used and we can also when the as soon as you are putting the egg into it, it disintegrate with the presence of heat. So few drops of vinegar and salt can be added to maintain the shape as you can see in this picture the poached object that picture. Stewing. Stewing is also a very delicate method I will say. It brings out the flavor of the food into the water and there is a osmosis process. Many times in water we add the whole spices also and that flavor reaches to the thing and many times stewed vegetables, stewed fruits are very very tasty rather flavorful. In this the food is simmered in a small quantity of liquid and with the presence of steam slowly and slowly that is a process the flavor is developed and the food gets softened. Pressure cooking. Nowadays is a one of the commonest method. Everybody is using the pressure cooker. You can see the steam going out. In this 
time is shortened because when we do the cooking in the temperature is risen and the nutrient availability and or the nutrient retention is more palatability is high or it saves the time fuel and the effort what we need to be careful during pressure cooking do not over fill the pressure cooker till brim it should not fill leave some space for the steam take care of rubber gasket vent pipe safety wall and change it immediately if damaged otherwise they can be very damaging to the surrounding lower the flame when first whistle come and do not try to open the lid immediately after the cooking so wait till the pressure cooker cools down or pour the water over it then only the pressure cooker otherwise it can be very dangerous now this is called blanching blanching is an activity which inactivates the enzymes and after boiling the food it can be used it is not a cooking and it is used generally in preparing the gravies or in food preservation so first washing is required then boiling and then blanching now we come to the next type of cooking methods that is called dry heat methods in this food is cooked without the use of any kind of water but using the hot air there is a need for the cooking methods are roasting grilling baking toasting etc this is roasting you can see on the top there is a roasting of the papar the direct heat is given at the below and that but with the food there is a no amount of water sometime if required some small smearing of the fat may be required so roasting imparts the characteristics brown color and flavor to the food chapatis vegetables non veg kebabs all these things are roasted so there are various tools or various ways of roasting and for different kinds of recipes or different kinds of food you can use the spit roasting oven roasting pan or pot roasting for the spit you use for the kebab corn brinjal in oven we generally use for the non veg and for pan we use the root vegetables potato sweet potato etc now next method is grilling what is grilling from the below the fire is given and on the either on the metal grid the food is there or sometime the fire sometime keep on stirring the and nowadays electric grills are also available for that very popular one is baking you eat the biscuits you eat the cake in the here is very charming colorful cookies are coming out of the oven so this method is using the dry heat in that the steam of the food water whatever water is present inside the food or the batter comes out and with that in the closed container that cooks the food so there is a requirement of the oven it is the crispy food brown soft and the porous toasting is generally done to make the food item particularly the bread slices over the grill or in the toaster it gives a mild brown color and it turns the starch into the dextrin which gives the little sweetness to the bread now very popular methods is cooking with the fat why it is so popular because when fat along with the food is heated it releases the flavor compounds and that makes the food very tasty appetizing and irresistible and there are various methods depending upon the amount of fat used is deep frying shallow frying and sauteing let us see one by one sauteing means minimum amount of fat is used in this kind of cooking when it is used for the seasoning and this is called sauteing 
and it is a very healthy way of cooking. It retains maximum amount of nutrient and flavor into the food as you can see in this picture. Now the shallow frying. Food is cooked generally on the flat vessel, tawa or very small amount of oil is added. You can see in the picture the how the Indian potato tikkis are made and little amount of fat it gets roasted, cooked and gives the crispy surface. Deep frying you can see in the picture the oil is boiling in that the food product is there and with the kind of sieve these pakoras are taken out frying this. So large amount of fat is doing it gives the typical flavor, typical color, crispness and it is very tasty and it saves time also. But most of the time some of the nutrients are lost but some are conserved also. Points to remember for the deep frying, do not fill the kadhai more than two third of its volume. Reduce the flame immediately if oil starts smoking. What is smoking? If oil gets smoke or more fire is coming that should not be used because smoked oil is harmful for the health and may spoil the taste and flavor of the food. Turn the food gently to prevent the splashing of the hot oil. Drain the excess oil from the food after frying. Do not over fry the food and repeated use of the same oil is not good for the health. This is a novel or new Nowadays, it is more practiced to heat the food is microwave cooking. So you can see in the moving picture, there is a full glass plate which keeps on moving when it is on and the food is there. And from there is a picture here on the left side. So there is a cabinet like oven and from there the electromagnetic waves are coming there and which is cooking the food. Microwave cooking involves the use of high frequency electromagnetic rays which are also called as microwaves are penetrating the food and electromagnetic rays produce the frictional heat by setting the vibration within the food and cooking is done in a special ovens called microwave oven. So there should be a need for water also. Now another important or popular method which is very environment friendly which does not require any kind of electricity but it uses the rays of the sun and we call it solar cooking. Solar cooking is the use of solar energy as an alternative source of fuel for the cooking. It is based on the principle that black surface and the background absorbs the solar rays get heated and from that food, that heat the food is kept. So as you have seen in the previous picture, the food is kept inside the black box and when the sun rays are there and that cooks the food with the presence of heat. Here I would like to summarize the whole thing again for a minute. You have learned in this lesson the different types of pre-preparation of food or I will say the conversion of raw food into the consumable food or food ready to cook. Then we have also learned the various methods of cooking, how they are done and what they kind of nutrient supply they give and the kind of texture, appearance different methods give and in what cases different methods are used and you have also have learned some amount of understanding about the microwave cooking and solar cooking. Thank you very much. I hope you have understood the lesson very well. Thank you once again.